today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm with Mr. Joseph Patterson. He's in London, and uh, why not? The best place to be where the Jamaican constitution was drafted, and yes, a stone throw away from him right here. Jamaica is on the quest to become a republic, to cut the ties with the UK, cut the ties with King Charles. Now, the UIC, which Mr. Patterson is the founder of, the United Independence Congress, um, Mr. Patterson, who is a chartered professional accountant, social entrepreneur, and good governance advocate, after his return to Jamaica from Canada, where he lived, and rose to director of finance in government, and it became Jamaica's third officially registered political party on December the 2nd, 2019. Now, I'm going to have a conversation with Mr. Patterson today, because this is very crucial. Mr. Patterson. Mm -hmm. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing fine, thanks. How are you? Not bad, not bad. We have had our different interviews so far, mm -hmm. online, virtual, COVID blocked us off, so we have yes. to be doing all things virtual, but it is good that you're here in London. My first question to you, why did you leave Jamaica? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I have only left Jamaica to come and spend some time with the diaspora here, Yes. but I'm shortly returning. You're shortly returning. And, and I have no plans to ever leave Jamaica on a yes. permanent basis yes. ever again. Fantastic. Yes. Well, well it's, in, it's glad that you said that, and, and I'd like to ask you, first of all, and for those who may not have watched even the initial shows that we had before, those who do not know about you, because this is the first time I'm sitting down with you, tell us about yourself and UIC to Jamaicans in the diaspora. Sure. Well, as um, you know, yes. the UIC was formed on um, December 2nd, 20. 19. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to that, I had lived in Canada for a number of years. I left Jamaica when I was around 23 years old. Yes. And I returned um, at 40 years old. Yes. Uh, 2011 to be exact. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the next two years of my sojourn in Jamaica was one where I spent the time evaluating where Jamaica has come from and where yes. it has reached at that time. Yes. And it was clear to me that we could not depend on or trust the two existing traditional parties yes. to bring about the kind of governance, good governance that Jamaica needed. Yeah. And so I spent the next 10 years working on building the UIC um, from its principles, its founding principles, its, its constitution, yes. its policies, its manifesto, and trying to bring together Jamaicans from desperate groups to yeah. say, let us work together to build this new political party. And is that why you call it independence? Exactly. So, yeah. so if you notice the name says United Independence Congress. Yes. So we want to unite all the independent thinkers. Yes. We want them to be a Congress, so this is not a dictatorial system. Uh, and we want to make sure that we have all Jamaicans who are interested in nation building and good governance to come to the table and help us build this new movement. Yeah, that, that's very interesting. So you're talking about the third political party, mm -hmm. but there have been different political parties who are third. You've got the NDM before, and mm -hmm. I think there was another one. What made you think that now is the time for a third political party to raise its head in Jamaica mm -hmm. to be an alternative? Mm -hmm. Well, the time has always been mm -hmm. opportune because you might recall the two major parties we have, they were really the product of three groups. Yes. Uh, the plantocracy of the day, that is mm -hmm. the rich elites that own the land mm -hmm. and, and, and properties and, and the capital of the country, those who, who benefited from slavery yes. and now owned the, 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 the assets of the country. So that group, the plantocracy, mm. they together with the media which they controlled actually created two controlled oppositions, two parties, to push out Marcus Garvey and to eliminate the Marcus Garvey party which yeah. was the first true as you and i yeah they, that's that's that was called the ppp ppp yes so when that party was, and he of course did the unia now so marcus garvey was the first jamaican to organize a political party and it was a grassroots party meaning it's owned by the people mm. the two parties that came after and which was used by the plantocracy to mm. displace him and get rid of his party mm. those two now are not really grassroots party they are owned and controlled by the plantocracy which yeah. today we call the psoj wow. which funds them and you and you might know this mm. they, they are funded almost equally the only time there's a change in in funding is if one or the other strays too far yes. from the psoj oligarch's position so in effect when jamaicans go to the poll 
whether they vote for one or the other, they're really voting for the PSOJ oligarchs. Right. Interesting. And, and also, Marcus Garvey won a seat while he was in prison. Yes, as well. yes, yes. Straight from the, the grassroots. They tried to lock him up to prevent him, mm. and the people still elected him. Yeah. Just like in 2021, yeah. when I led the demonstration, they locked me up as well. It, it's interesting you talk about Marcus Garvey, and a lot mm. of people are interested in Marcus Garvey. It, it seems that Marcus Garvey's name keep coming up a lot, his teachings keep coming up a lot, but somehow his principles are not being adhered to from the top. Mm. Hmm. Yes, because the, the whole aim you know, of the current colonial construct in Jamaica mm. is to prevent the people from ever being truly free. It mm. is to ensure that a small minority controls the assets of Jamaica, controls the capital of Jamaica, controls the economy of Jamaica, so that the majority remains on the margin, yes. and a small 1-10% to 10 controls 90% of the assets. That's very interesting, and, and I'm going to, when we touch on to the, even the Republic and the Constitution, mm -hmm. that is going to be coming back again. But let's talk about your 10-point plan. Sure. Let's talk about sure. the UIC yes. and the 10-point plan, so people can get involved with the UIC. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, sure. Well, first thing, you know, I want to, the UIC first and foremost, you see, mm -hmm. is what I like to call a rights-based party. Mm -hmm. Our focus is first on the rights of the Jamaican people, yes. wanting to protect three things. The right to your life, liberty, and property. Mm -hmm. Now, outside of that, now you have policies of the, the party and when we form government. Yes. So here are ten policies that we want to implement. The first one strikes at the heart of the crime problem that we have. We want to create what is called a youth employment solution. Yes. And this program ensures that every it's child... interesting I said yes. Yes. But, <laughs> yes. but, but my yes wasn't the fact that right. it's yes. It's all, yes. Exactly. <laughs> so it is still yes. Yes. So yes, Jamaica yes. Um, will ensure that every young person mm. that graduates from high school if they're not going on to a post-secondary program, mm. will be given a full-time full -time paid job yes. so that they can actually learn on the job mm. and build the skills and ethics that they need to have to be yes. productive. So we're going to starve the gangs by pulling them away yes. from that possibility. The second policy of the 10-point plan is what we call having, instead of a police force, having a police service. Mm. And instead of having a defense force that doesn't really have a a clear mandate. We're going to clarify the mandate mm -hmm. and make sure that the, the defense force becomes a defense service that fully protects our borders. Mm -hmm. Now, Selburn, if we fully protect our borders, the guns will stop coming. Mm -hmm. Right? And if you well, you're saying right. I yeah, mean, if people have been trying to stop the guns from coming in for a long time. Yes, but they have failed. And yeah. the reason they have failed uh -huh. is because those who, are, those, who, those who we have asked to stop the guns from coming uh -huh are two parties that have given guns to our young men and women. Mm. They have created garrisons. They have funded dons. They have created, they have allowed gangs to mushroom and take over mm. the country. So we can't ask those who create the problem to fix it. So our second policy is repurpose the police mm. and create a service. Police need to respect citizens. They don't respect mm. the citizens. Mm. So they need to switch from being um, this aggressive force to becoming community polices yeah. that are fully embedded in the society and a part of the growth of the communities. And if you do that while having the army doing its job of fully, pr fully protecting the borders yes. and preventing the guns and ammo from coming in, you're beginning to see uh, crime uh, go down. Yeah. Our third policy is to ensure that every child has four things. Um, proper nutrition, mm -hmm. proper education, proper health care, yes. and decent housing. Now, you might say it does sound so general, but if a child isn't fed properly, they can't learn properly. Yes. If we don't have an education product, that does better than now. Right now we yeah. fail 70% of our students every year. 70% mm. fail. And the 30% who succeed, half of them migrate shortly thereafter. Yeah. So you're building a high concentration of persons who are not competent and equipped to add to the productivity of the country. Yes. So we want to make sure we deal with the nutrition, the education. Healthcare is key. And yeah. for us, that means from the prenatal stage. Yeah. So um, tapping into the family early, uh, the mother and father, mm. the proper development of the fetus mm -hmm. so that when you have the child mentally and stuff it's ready and finally 
we have to have a housing program similar to Singapore where mm. they've been able to get to 93% home ownership rate mm. we're going to get to 98% by having a national housing program that provides every single Jamaican the opportunity to own a home that is decent mm. uh, that is of a, a quality that is fit for a family mm -hmm. of three or four mm. and we're going to make sure that that happens in an economically responsible way you know I want to stop you right yes. there because in 1962 when Jamaica became uh, independent so I, I'm not going to say independent. Jamaica <laughs> started the process of independence because I'm on record and, and people can search it whereby I said you, you cannot be independent and yet you swear allegiance to a, yeah. a foreign power. But anyway, I say the process of independence. And in that process of independence, I strongly believe that in 1962, if people were really strategic and were genuine, mm -hmm. Land should have been apportioned to the people of Jamaica. So you're speaking our language now. Am I speaking your language? Yes, because okay. our, we are the only yeah. party in Jamaica mm. that has made it very clear that upon election, we're going to do what is called um, local reparation. Because, because what you have, we have been asking for reparation from the foreigners from the colonial masters. And you're, li you're listening to me when no, you're listening to your policies? No, no. Okay, right. <laughs> but it's good. And, and so the colonial yeah. masters, we've been saying, our politicians have been saying we should get reparation. Well, they had the power all this time yes. to give the people back the land, the land that was stolen yes. from our ancestors. It, it is very interesting what you said, and, and I've said this many times as well, ladies and gentlemen. We can chant down Babylon one more time and go down to nothing, um, Buckingham Palace, mm -hmm. number 10 Downing Street. But I said, hang on a second. Aren't we missing out on a trick here? Right here, in, no, right in Jamaica, mm -hmm. we could start the process for a reparation in a sense, just like what you said Absolutely. There, giving the people so they can have this base, this foundation, and go on this ladder of economic wealth. Without property, there's no freedom. Yes. Without, we, you remember now, the, the, the colonial masters, mm. they stole two things from us. They stole our land yes. and they stole our labor. Mm. And so when we, when we got to independence, we literally um, were, were, okay, let me go yeah. back a bit if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. There are three points in history we need to remember. Yes. In 1838, when they gave us so-called freedom, mm -hmm. they say, you're now free. Yes. They did not give us back our land, mm -hmm. nor did they give us back the capital gained from our labor. Yes. So that freedom was a fake freedom. In 1944, 106 years later, yes. they then gave us the right to vote. Mm -hmm. That was a fake democracy yes. because even though we had the so-called right to vote, they had a governor from England over mm -hmm. us who could make sure that the policy in a form yeah. that will be contrary. And then in 1962 now, mm -hmm. they crystallized that fakeness by giving us a fake independence mm -hmm. with a foreigner as head of state. But more than that, Throughout all this process, they never returned the land to the people mm. and they never returned or even compensated them partially for the capital that was stolen from them by their labor. The UIC is going to reverse all of that by first and foremost say to every Jamaican whose parents or ancestors were enslaved that you are entitled to a piece mm. of this land. Entitled, free mm -hmm. of charge. Yes. So now we're going to put you one step up on the ladder now. Yes. Those who don't have land are going to get it and those who already have lands will become Compensated for the fact that no land is going to be available. Yeah. Yes. Now we're going to touch into this more, and and yes. and this just actually came out of the child, the child having that home, yes, and knowing that they yes. actually have this legacy, a base, yes, that base there, yes, can pass, so, on can pass on from generation to generation, to generation. Yeah. and build on it. Yeah, well, go, go mm -hmm. through the quickly. Uh, yeah, if, you, if you can go quickly, quickly through the other, and then we we'll so, need to go so, to the constitution. So the yeah. next one we had, yeah. which, which <clears> actually touches on what we're talking about. Yes. Our plan is to divest all crown lands and government lands. We still have crown lands in Jamaica. Yes, Sorry. we do, which is amazing. <laughs> um, but either way, it is yeah. lands that have been co-opted and stolen. And listen, Selburn, yeah. people don't forget. Mm. It is 80 years now that these two parties could have returned the land to you, yes. and they have not returned it to you. Mm. So when people vote for a UIC, they're voting mm. for a party that is saying, we're going to return that land to you. So we're going to divest all crown lands, and we're going to do something. A, make all Jamaicans property owner, mm. and B, we're going to get rid of ghettos, garrisons, and squatter communities mm. by this one policy. We're going to have a standard whereby all of the country must look, smell, and feel like a tourist resort. Why do mm. I say this? 
if you do not make the country look and smell and feel good, you won't lift the spirits of the people yes. and bring out the best in them. Yes. The vision of the UIC is a Jamaica that brings out the best in all mm. its people. You know, when people travel to Jamaica and they go to all-inclusive resorts and they take a break, mm -hmm. they come back all the while from holidays feeling fresh and rejuvenated. Yes. Yes. And what you're actually trying to say is that Jamaicans should feel that way. Absolutely. In Adam Yard. In Adam Yard. In a freedom country. Because lots of people come, <coughs> take advantage of yes. it, and they are excelling in their exactly. land. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, so yeah. just to piggyback on yeah. that, um, associated with the idea of making the entire country look, mm. smell and feel good, right? Yes, yes. We want to make all of Jamaica a tourist product, yes. like all of it. So now we're going to have true community tourism. Yes. Yeah? And this means, Selburn, that instead of the all-inclusive resort getting mm. all the business, mm. now the average Jamaican will have full access to the tourist market. Why? Because we have made this community look good, yes. feel good, and smell good. And we have, given, we have empowered him now to provide services locally, sell the farmers food locally yes. right to the to the to the to the tourists as opposed mm. to the foreign company comes and own our tourist product yes. and then buy at low price from the farmers and then sell it back or importing as well and competing with our farmers yes. we're going to push that economy down to the grassroots mm. so that we can lift up the Jamaican men and women who are at the bottom right now struggling after 80 years of these two parties lifting up Jamaica yes. and, and we move on mm. The next item has to do with the matter of toll roads. Yes. Can you imagine paying taxes to build roads, to fix roads, to maintain roads, yeah. and then to leave your community and go somewhere in Jamaica and must pay toll again on the road? Yes. Our friends in Portmore, for example, can't leave them yard and go to Kingston quickly yeah. unless they pay toll to get there. Yeah. But they already pay taxes. So we're going to do away with toll roads. We're going to be, and by the way, the toll roads are only accessible to the rich and powerful in Jamaica because yeah. the average man can't afford it. Yeah. If you drive on the toll, I drive on the toll road. When yeah. I was coming here, I got out of my house and I jump on the toll road and I zip across and I was in Kingston. Yeah. Quick, 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 quick. The road was empty. The bypass road now. Pack. Pack. And full of patrol. Is and that the causeway? Remember the causeway bridge? Right. So I'm talking about yeah. the, the, the bypass between um, Clarendon and Kingston. Okay. The okay. toll road that runs that leg. Right, right. And then you have another toll now that takes you from Portmore into Kingston. Mm -hmm. That's the one mm -hmm. you're talking about. Yes. So the causeway was turned into that. You yeah. know, causeway where you and I used to drive with a boy. Yeah, remember, yeah. yeah. So that now is a, is, a, is a toll road. So if you want to get to Kingston, you have mm -hmm. to go the longer way around. Um, to get to, to your work. So we're going to convert toll roads back to the Jamaican people. No Fant more tolls. Fantastic. And we're going to ensure now that you yeah. have a proper public transportation system. Mm. Um, one which is efficient, which you can set your watch by it. Yes. Um, remember old days, you know, we used to have good public transit yes. in the 1970s, 80s, you know. Mm. People and are actually saying a lot yeah. that uh, time back we, in we've Jamaica, gone things were really good. We've actually gone backwards. i tell you something which hurts mm. my heart. Mm. If you look at Jamaica when the colonial masters left it, when they just left, you know, and, and they didn't leave fully, but they left on paper and they stopped running directly, yes, right? Yes. Many of the institutions were being run better when they were in charge. Mm. So we had a bus service that was working. Yes. We, when they left, we had an airline that was profitable. Yes. We, had, we run our own airports. Today, our airports are owned by foreigners. Our airline has been sold off and our public transit system is a mm. complete wreck. What does that tell you? Mm. What the, the two major parties are trying to prove to the Jamaican people is that we cannot run anything ourselves. You, you give the impression that the yes. two major parties are singing from the same song. Absolutely. So what there's it, no difference? There's no difference. They, they, it's, um, it's a different flavor of the same coffee. Mm. Yeah? So I'm one is Latin. vanilla. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so when we, so when we tell, when we tell people, you know, when we tell people that yeah. voting for one or the other, yes. you're still voting for your enslavement. I've, you're still voting for the PSOJ. Oligarchs. I've always said this in the UK all the while when you come on to elections and uh, you vote out the government, mm -hmm. you still get the government in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. vote out the government, you still get the government mm -hmm. in. The same so kind of government. So what you're actually trying to say, you vote out the JLP, you get the PNP. You vote out the PNP, you still get the yeah. JLP. Mm -hmm. Same difference. Yes. Is it the reason why you believe that you're also being suppressed? Absolutely. Well, we, you know, the UIC. Yeah, course. the UIC. Yeah. What, what Jamaicans may not understand and, and the mm -hmm. diaspora is coming around to it is that 
the same people who fund these two parties also control the media. Mm. Right? They own they own TVJ, they own CVM, they own the Gleaner, they own the Observer. Is it that's why there's attack against the bloggers? Absolutely. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, Social media and, guys, huh? Yeah, and they <laughs> and they also own the two parties by virtual like the last election, yes. they gave them three hundred million dollars for just a two for two weeks, mm. a few weeks of election. Mm. Three hundred million dollars. Now when you ask why third parties don't succeed in Jamaica, I'm gonna come to that later. Yeah. But that's one of the reasons. Right. A, a <laughs> very big reason is that the funding comes from these two. Now, the UIC is bypassing that by being what Marcus Garvey did in the first place, mm -hmm. creating a grassroots party funded by the people and owned by the people. So, therefore, no one can say that I got special interests. I gave you this, so therefore, you've got to follow my policies yeah. and the things that so I So, we're want. dangerous, um, Silburn, because when we're elected, we will be working for the people because yes. the people own the party. But really and truly, ladies and gentlemen, as far as I'm concerned, and my understanding is that the people really owns the country. Is that well, the they, they, well, they should, but they don't. Yeah. Okay. They, so they, the PSOJ oligarchs own the country. Right. Um, they, this is showing a different flavor now because yes. it seems like the, the hand of the people is totally tied. Absolutely. That's why 63% no longer votes. Because they realize wow. voting for one or the other won't make a difference. But back to our yes. ten point plan. Yes. We I don't think we're gonna finish it. We're gonna go finish on. it quickly. <laughs> another another key element yeah. that I want your viewers uh, to know about yes. is that we intend to make food, water and energy secure by shifting away from mining mm. to what we call organic farming. Yes. So we're gonna create, we're gonna make Jamaica the organic food capital of the world. You're talking about water harvesting. You're talking about making um, Jamaica more energy independent mm. by moving to alternative energy sources. Mm. Jamaica has sun 12 months a year. We have mm. a huge amount of organic matter. We have geothermal capacities that yes. are untapped. Um, we have uh, water hydroelectric power possibilities. Mm. So I hear the government now talking about nuclear. So they want to take us into an area that is most dangerous. We can't manage bus company. Mm. We can't manage airline. You want us to manage a nuclear plant mm. in Jamaica? Oh Would yes, you? I've been here a lot of yeah. nuclear. So, so they're, they're, going, they're going off the rail. And I think they do these things just to get some new cycle going. But yeah. we are serious about building a Jamaica that is food, water, and energy secure. And if we do that, we can have independence. If you, yeah. cannot, if you can't feed yourself, mm. and if you're... Let me tell you this, Jamaica yeah. has the capacity to produce and sell water to the world. Land, wood and water? Yes. Jamaica. And guess what? We had water challenges the other day when we had a little drought. Why? Because our government has not invested in effective water harvesting technology, yeah. which is easy, you know, simple mm. technology in permaculture. The next item you want to talk about is, you know, we have to recognize that Jamaica has developed a large poverty stricken population. Yes. So our plan is to eliminate poverty with what we call a workfare program. Mm. What does that mean? Anybody who is unemployed and wants a job, we're going to provide one for them. We have forestry, we have farming, mm. we have um, energy production, we have um, community policing, we have all kinds of opportunities that we're not tapping into. We as a government must ensure we create opportunities yes. for people to work. You know, when I was thinking about, um, it mm. just came to me, Rwanda yes. for argument's sake, went through yes. this massive uh, period where mm -hmm. they um, atrocities against each other, but somehow the leadership in Rwanda is creating this massive thrust of economic yeah, growth. revival. Yes, yes. Uh, and that is why sometimes people are saying, what's wrong with Rwanda when the UK want to send um, um, asylum seekers there? But I won't go into that. Mm, but, mm. but Rwanda is a classic example and people always talk about Singapore the same. Absolutely. We always go back to Singapore and then we tap into Rwanda. Mm -hmm. So where what is, where, what, what are we, what are yeah, we doing is, wrong? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, where we have gone wrong mm. as a nation is that we have never focused on the things we should focus on. Mm. Let's look quickly at Singapore, how they became wealthy. Yeah. I mean, they got independence in 1965. We got independence in 1963, 62. Mm. So three years later, yeah. when they got independence, uh, Selburn, they had religious wars, mm -hmm. linguistic wars. Mm -hmm. It was a more migratory population. Yes. Um, and Singapore doesn't even have one percent of the resources we yes. have. Now, what did did Lee Kuan Yew do to make Singapore successful? Mm -hmm. Number one, 
he focused on eliminating political corruption, number mm. one. And the, the way he did that was to have a top-down approach by eliminating yes. anybody from the top who engaged in corruption. Yes. <clears throat> number two, he insisted on a safe environment. If you don't have safety, business can't thrive. Yes. Number two, number three, he made Singapore, what I'm talking about, clean and beautiful to lift the spirits of the people yes. and give them a sense of pride. Yes. And number four, he ensured public order. The same things the UIC is going to do for Jamaica. Right. Well, okay. Well, number eight, to get rid of the Queen and the Governor General. We're going to touch on that because that's, yes. that's, we're going to talk about that shortly after. Yes. Um, you just touched a while ago about nine investigate, prosecute, and convict all politicians. <laughs> Touch on that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so the, the UIC <coughs> is committed to having a Truth and Reconciliation mm -hmm. Commission. We believe it's important for mm -hmm. us to understand why Jamaica became so violent. Why yes. did crime become such a major issue? Mm -hmm. And we believe the way to do that is to allow Jamaicans the opportunity to come forward and share what they know. Now, anyone who is implicated but failed to come forward to the commission yes. and let us know will will receive the full extent of the law we're going to prosecute especially politicians we have to look at their assets we have to look at how they have been able to achieve wealth yes. we're going to forensically investigate them even if they're former politicians yes even if they have passed away we want to get mm. the history clear and we're going to make sure that they pay for it right. if their if their estate is benefiting from in got ill-gotten gains, we're going to confiscate that. So we're going all the way out to make sure we return to the Jamaican people what was stolen from them. So the, uh, that, that is going to be something facilitated like with the Integrity Commission? It's going to be a commission, yes, similar mm. to the one that they had in um, South Africa. Yes. And um, it's going to be very transparent, very open, yes. and it comes with a, an amnesty program. Yes. So persons who volunteer information, there are people who want to talk, you know. Yeah. But if they talk, they're imp implicating themselves. Yes. So I want to give them that freedom, and we collect all of that information so that posterity can have it documented. Right. Our history book, Selburn, must tell clearly why 800 people died in the 1980s yes. um, election. Yes. It must help us understand why and how and through what means politicians gave guns to our boys yes. and created the garrisons and the gangs and caused a doodus to rise and all these kind of and things. And why Rastas were... And why Rastas were... Um, they wanted um, to kill off were, were dead the, or why, alive. Why Buster Mantis said, bring them in dead or alive. You're, you're right about that. Yeah. You know, there, there's so much depth and there's and so many... And from our so history many, books. There's so many... Yeah. Um, so many things, I believe, under the carpet, yes. in a way. But number 10, you say eliminate property taxes and duty and replace them with a single 10-person income. In one minute on that one, before yes. we give a break. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So um, we are going to do the unthinkable. Yeah. We're going to eliminate property taxes. Why? Mm -hmm. Property tax is um, fraudulent. Yes. Because what you're saying is, I buy something yes. and then I must pay a tax on it in perpetuity, mm. which means I re may I rent the property from you. Yes. So property tax is a rent that you're paying for the property that you have bought. Yes. So we believe that's unjust. Mm. And the only way you can become a true pop property owner is if you pay one time if you buy the something. Now remember, yes. many Jamaicans should have had property and they don't have it. Yes. So when we give them that property for free, they won't be paying taxes on it right. any time in the future. So the asset... Yeah. Just imagine a senior citizen, Selberg. Mm. You're a senior citizen in Jamaica, and you, you slave and buy back the land that was stolen from your ancestors. Mm. You slave, you know, and buy back the land that was stolen from your ancestors. And then now, you must pay a property tax on it forever. And as you get older, knowing your income level is mm. going down, your stress level starts to go up. Huh? Because you, you have to find money now to yeah. pay for this. Yeah. So we're going to make our seniors feel comfortable mm. again mm. without having to pay any property tax. It's totally unfair. Well, yes. ladies and gentlemen, let's take a quick break and now uh, we're going to come back and talk about Jamaica moving to a republic and with the revamp of the constitution with Mr. Joseph Patterson. Thank you. Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm with Mr. Joseph Patterson as we are talking about the UIC, but most importantly, now we are going to talk about the meat, which is about Jamaica on its quest to become a republic and the revamping of the constitution. What's your say on this exciting venture? I mean, you are now in London, England, a right place to be, a stone throw from mm -hmm. where actually the constitution could have been drafted in the backside of some office mm -hmm. in Westminster. 
what's your take on this new quest, uh, Mr. Patterson? Well, moving forward, and the uh, part of your plan as well. Yes, the the, yeah. the 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 plan to become a republic is a key and essential part of the UIC's mm. mission and mandate. Um, I believe the government is actually trying to preempt the fact that we have been pushing this, yeah. and as the UIC gets traction, it's going to cause some stir. So they're trying to head it off. Yes. Um, what I can assure you is that <clears throat> the the government is trying to pass off a fake republic. And what yes. do I mean by that? A fake republic is where you put lipstick on the pig. Yes. So they want to simply change the name of the governor general to president. And maybe a few more superficial changes. Yes. And then tell us we're now a republic. Yes. But what the UIC is advocating for is a real republic with substantive changes. Yeah. Pri not changes, replacement of the existing constitution. Yeah. Not a reform, not a, not a change, yeah. but a replacement. Why do we want a replacement? You cannot build on a, a poor foundation. The yeah. current constitution was written and designed to carry out the wishes and aspirations of the colonial masters. I want to stop you right there. Yes. And uh, I want to make this as much education as possible at this time because mm -hmm. um, as you know they are appointed 14 persons to lead the charge and one of the words which is coming out is education mm -hmm. if somebody is watching now and they're saying what is he talking about republic what is a republic very good What's question a, yeah, what yes. is a republic? so if you go <clears throat> online you'll see a number of definition but most people believe yeah. a republic is where you have a president yes. instead of um, a monarch being your head of state. Right. That's what most people think. Mm. But a real republic is one that protects the individual sovereignty of every citizen. Yes. A real republic. Yes. So in a fake republic, what will happen is sovereignty will reside somewhere else other than the individual. Mm -hmm. And government then will have policies which allows them, if they wish, to violate your personal sovereignty. Yes. So for example, in a real republic, the government could not mandate an injection. Mm -hmm. It will be, you wouldn't even think about it because a republic <coughs> protects your sovereignty, freedom yes. of choice. Yes. Okay? Freedom of movement, freedom of association, yes. and so on. In a fake republic, it may list your charter of rights, but then have provisions in the constitutions whereby those in authority can take away those mm -hmm. rights as they see fit. A true republic fully protects those rights, and that's why the UIC has yes. always maintained your right to life liberty and yeah. property must always be protected yeah. and now i'm going to um eliminate it so someone can see yes. let's use an example mm -hmm. barbados what type of republic is right that? so barbados is a fake republic so what they did was to do the lipstick on the pig thing yes. they simply re re change the name from governor general to president and leave the system intact so the colonial system and construct which makes jamaica <coughs> A very corrupt country. Yes. And Barbados, a corrupt country, remains intact. So there's no fundamental change. No fundamental change. Just the change. top there. Just the top. Same MPs. Same MPs. Same senators. Same structure. Same appointed. Exactly. Only thing is that they don't swear allegiance to the Queen. Queen or anymore. King. Yes. Yeah. And by the way, that's yeah. a good. Th it's a good thing yes, yes. that you're no longer swearing allegiance yes. to a foreign power. Oh, yes. It's a good thing that you no longer refer to the monarch in your constitution. Yes. But we need more than that. Right. <coughs> now, which is a real republic? Which, com which country? There's, there's Nigeria, there is uh, Trinidad, there is South mm -hmm. Africa. Which one right. would you say is a... So the closest we have yeah. come internationally yes. to a true republic is the USA. The closest we have okay. come. And they have failed. Mm. So the USA went, they were going in the right direction, but they left too many loopholes in their constitution and allowed for too many amendments to right. water down the protection of the rights of their right. citizens. And so the UIC is going to give the world the first ever true republic. So what you have done now, you have looked at the fake, you have looked at the, the one which was the best, which mm has -hmm. sort of starting to fail in a yes. way, and you have, you are creating. Yes. The, tr the, the true the republic. ultimate republic. The ultimate. So we're going to yes. do. We're going to yes. do for politics what mm. Bob Marley did for music, yes. and what you see in Bolt and Shelley and did Fraser for, for did running. for athletics. Yes. We're going to be the champions, the author, the creator of the world's first real republic. Yes. We're going to show America what they could have been. Yes. I want you to break it down more for me at the same yes. time with with what what's the distinction at the same time because in jamaica you've got the senate mm -hmm. and you've got the prime minister um and all of these appointment 
if, if you can sort of sure. put some color on it. Some let, me put some, let me put some context to yeah, it for you. Yeah. So in the current system, um, at the very top is the monarch of England. Yes. Then the people get to vote. Yes. The people vote based on a system that's partisan in the yes. current system, yes. which is funded by the private sector elites. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you elect that, the, whichever party has the majority of MPs, the leader of that party becomes the prime minister. Yes. He or she then gets to nominate 13 of the 21 senators. Yes. Uh, not nominate, appoints. Appoint. Which means immediately they're beholden to him because he appointed them. So they have to just play his ball. So, right. They don't have to, you know, but they're, I'll tell you why they're more inclined to. Yes. All the senators he appoints would love for him to further appoint them to a ministerial position. Right. So if you play your cards right and behave yourself, the prime minister may give you a ministerial position. For example, Ruel Reed, which was the education minister. Yes. He was taken from a school as as principal, made a senator by the prime minister so that he could then appoint him to minister of education. Yes. And then he realized he got into serious corruption scandal and had to resign and yes. so on. So that's what happens. Then on the MP side now, all of the MPs from the prime minister's um, side are hoping and praying that he will appoint them to a ministerial position. So that makes the prime minister very, very powerful, powerful. because he appoints the Senate he appoints MPs and he, he fixed the cabinet any which way he wants. He has mm. absolute power but on it, these matters. But in the UK, we do have that because sure. he, even the Prime Minister appointed him the BBC chair. Yeah, and I'm going to come to that. Yes. I'm going to tell you what's the difference between Jamaica and, 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 and Britain in a second. Yeah. Yeah. But I want you, the, the Jamaican people, to fully yeah. understand, first of all, how mm. powerful the Prime Minister is. Yeah. Now, watch what is going on here. The Prime Minister now sits as head of the executive branch of government. Yes. He also sits in the parliament as a legislator. Mm. He appoints legislators to be a part of the executive, mm -hmm. to run the ministries. He appoints senators and is also able to appoint those senators. So you have a mix up now mm. of the executive branch and the legislative branch. So those who are supposed to be overseeing are also a part of. So they can't carry out no their functions. Exactly. They can't carry out wow. their functions effectively because they're not commingled. So nobody can come out and say, yo, yo, yo. Yes. Stop what you're doing. Because People are not happy about this. Because they're implicated too. Now yes. the opposition, you'd say, but the opposition can mm. do that. But the opposition, by virtue of you telling us the Jamaican people that we have government and opposition, means that you're telling us that the opposition will always oppose and therefore are not always credible. Mm. And when they get elected, they have the same kind of situation, so they are also culpable because of the same arrangement when they get elected. Mm. The UIC fixes all of that. Here's how we fix it. Yes. Right? Let's talk about solutions now. Yes. Number one, mm. we will have an elected president. Right now, the current system don't elect the leader. Backdoor deals select the leader for yeah. the party who yeah. becomes the leader. We're going to have an elected president who will serve not only as head of government, the executive mm. branch, but also head of state. Yes. So we're not separating the two. One money. You follow me? Yeah. We're not paying one time, not yeah. two time. The Senate now will be elected as well, independent of the president, one per parish. So yes. 14 instead of 21 appointed by the yes. Prime Minister and the opposition. Okay? Your MPs now, instead of being selected by parties, yeah. they will come from the grassroots in the communities. Yes. And the, the community will nominate and elect them. But here's the kicker. Mm. Here's the most important element to this solution. Very important. We will no longer have privately funded candidates or parties. Okay. In our system, it's a 100% publicly funded system. And here's the way it works. We don't give you the money. Mm. To qualify as a candidate, you must first take an exam where you prove that you understand good governance. It includes mm. civics, statistics, economics, yeah. so on. So you prove that you have the competences. Yes. You also must have experience in leadership, manage, management, and, mm. and stuff like that. Once you have that, and you go to your constituents and get a certain number of nominators who nominate you, and these nominators, when they nominate you, they lose yeah. their vote. So they have to be careful. So when they give it to you, it's gone. Yes. Once you get all of that in place, you get the same access to newspaper, radio, television, yes. internet, town hall meetings, and debates, like any other candidates. Mm. And then you're fact-checked. So no undue influence. Yes, and then you're fact-checked 
by a panel of fact checkers to make sure what you have said and what you're proposing, yeah. all of the things checked yeah. out. And that is communicated to the public. And then we have an election without any fanfare. Yes. So, so nobody gets to go buy curry goat mm -hmm. and rum and give out armbands and caps. So all of that thing is gone and no private sector company now or anybody can now influence the process yeah. by their monies. But whether you are a rich person or a poor person, you can run for office based on your credibility yes. and based on your character and your platform. So what you're talking about is the people having a fundamental impact there. And Absolutely. Having, and, they are and the candidates now, look at the candidates, they're now free to talk the way they want. Yes. So because remember, every candidate now, you know, not for worry about the party. Yes. They say, boy, I'm going to have to toe the line, you know, because I'm going to toe the line, the prime minister and company might push mm -hmm. me out. They don't have to worry that they took money from company X and if they don't go and do a company X, say, they're going to push them out. Yes. They are fully now beholden to the people because the only way they get elected is by their performance, right. not by who is funding them mm -hmm. or which party they belong to, mm -hmm. which is why we call our system a non-partisan constitutional republic because you don't have to be partisan to participate. You yes. can be partisan if you want, yes. but you don't have to be. Parties have l would lose their influence now because yes. they cannot now just say we control the candidates. Yes. They'll have to win by virtue of having good policies yes. and can influence mm -hmm. people with what they're proposing, not by the power they get from yeah. the PSOJ oligarchs. So, so therefore, ladies and gentlemen, what we are getting from Mr. Patterson is a breakdown of what we have, yes. what the ceremonial is, what the executive president is, mm -hmm. and the ultimate true Republic, Republic is, yes, yes. or the president is. And, um, and that is something we, we hope to achieve, definitely. What is your, uh, before we wrap up, what's mm -hmm. your education process then along with the, what do you think about the, the, the panel which has been established? To it's a farce. Sorry. No, that's a farce. And, and even with the yeah. constitution. No, that's a farce. So what the government is doing right now, all of it is a farce. Uh, yes. What they're doing is trying to give us the impression that they're doing something constructive and meaningful. All they're doing is pulling the whole over our eyes again. And remember, they tricked yeah. us in 1838, they tricked us in 1944, they tricked us in 1962. We cannot afford for them to trick us in 2023. We are tricked by our own now. By our own, yes. Yeah, we started off with the colonial masters. They tricked us in 1838. They used our own kind to trick us in 1944. Mm. And they used our own kind to trick us in 1962. And I bet you, right now, they're trying to trick the same colonial powers yeah. together. Because here's what's going to happen, Selburn. They're going to put forward a referendum to the people. Right? They're going to yeah. put forward one. They're going to come up with a fake thing. And they're going to put forward a, a, a referendum statement and say vote yes or no. If the people vote no, which they um, should, if they vote no, they're going to say, see, we want to stay with the monarchy. Which gives them still the same power. Yes. If the people vote yes. With the ceremonial. Yeah, you get, you get a fake republic. So therefore. Which, which keep the same system in place. So therefore, it's important yeah. for so how so so, 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 so how do we how, so how, how would you break that up then? Right. Huh? The only way we get out of this yeah. is by the people deciding that they're not going to support this process. They're going to support the UIC's agenda. So the people have to get behind, and that's what we're doing. Yeah. We're building momentum now. By the time we have the next election, yeah. we're going to bring the entire nation with us to say yeah. we don't want what you're offering. Yeah. We're not just going to vote yes or no. Yeah. We don't want it. We want a real republic. Yeah. And they have two options. When we, we, we're going to take to the streets of them. Yeah. When we go out no, there. They're now, locked up again. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> not just me. The whole country is yeah, going to have yeah, a lockup. Yeah. We're going to say very simple. Mm. You have two choices. The two of you. You either adopt what the UIC is proposing or we depose you and elect the UIC to do it. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we could go on so much more with this, and I believe that there's so much more coming out of Jamaica in regarding this, and I'll be interviewing respective leaders and to, as much as possible to use this platform as an educational tool. Before I wrap up and um, get Mr. Patterson back on the plane to Jamaica to sort it out, I don't want the king to keep him here as his subject. Um, what would be your, your last word then to, because you're engaging with the Jamaicans in the UK, yeah. what's your last word to the Jamaicans in the diaspora? Uh, my last word is the UIC <coughs> is our last hope and opportunity to make mm. the change that you want to see. The UIC is more than a political party. We're a movement committed to the transformation of Jamaica into a safe, clean and orderly, non-partisan 
constitutional republic mm. where you can live, earn, and retire with dignity. The way for us to achieve that is for us to come together and unite. That's why we talk about one Jamaica and say we're stronger together. Let mm. us come together. Let us pool our time, our talent, and our treasures together so we can create that new Jamaica. We cannot rely on those who have failed us for 80 years. We now must turn our backs on that and look forward mm. to a new Jamaica with new leadership, a new system so that we can have a new experience. So join me. Go to uicjamaica.com and sign up today, volunteer and donate for the country that you want to see. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Patterson. My pleasure. That's awesome. My pleasure. And if someone is to say to you now, what is your favorite mantra or your positive outlook on life or your quote that you'd say what keeps you even when you're in prison mm -hmm. and they lock you up and you I'm sure that must have been a, a testing time yes. what is the word or what kept you going mm -hmm. well the key thing is I, I meditate a lot on the work of Marcus Garvey mm. and one of the things he said that stood with me to this very day he says any leadership that leads you to depend upon another race is a leadership that will lead you right back into slavery mm. and with that I realized that we the Jamaican people must look clearly and carefully at those who wish to lead us and where they yes. want to lead us. Yeah. So far, our current leaders have led us to become mm. dependent on others. Mm. We need to become truly independent yeah. now. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for joining and um, listening to Mr. Joseph Patterson, the president of UIC, United Independence Congress, while he's here in London, um, making sure that we revamp the Constitution right in the same room where it took place. And... Uh, uh, I want to thank you again because, and, and those in Jamaica or anywhere, whenever you come to the UK, tune in to the Silburn Show. Let's have a sit, let's have a conversation because I believe this whole discussion regarding the Republic, the Constitution, is not going to finish off now. It's going to keep continuing until we achieve the ultimate and the right Republic. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.